In this tutorial we're going to take a look at camera mapping and how we can attain photorealistic results of mid to background objects with the minimum amount of fuss. Camera mapping is a technique whereby we use a still or moving image to project onto low resolution geometry which has been matched up to the backplate image itself. In this example we'll be using this image of Battersea Power Station to align a camera, create low resolution geometry and then project the backplate back onto that geometry to create a virtual set. This image was taken with a Canon 5D Mark II. The Canon 5D Mark II has a full frame sensor of 36 by 24 millimeters. One easy way that we can normally find out this information in some images is by right mouse clicking over our image, going to properties within windows, and then if we go across to details, we can normally find out the metadata. So I can see here it's a Canon 5D Mark II. It was taken with a 50 millimeter lens. It also gives me some other camera information. But these are the two pieces of information we need in order to correctly match our camera up. Once we know which camera was used, we can look on Google to find out information about the sensor size. A quick search reveals that this camera sensor is 36 by 24 millimeters. Maya's horizontal and vertical film aperture is displayed in inches. This means that we'll need to do a very quick conversion to work out the correct numbers to put in. I'm going to use Windows Calculator and go to View and turn on Unit Conversion. From here we can set our type of input to length and we're going to say we want to go from millimeters to inches. If I now type in 36 as you can see that gives me a 1.417 inch horizontal film aspect. As you will also see that's exactly what we have here. If I type 24 you'll see that, that is 0.944 rounded up to 0.945. The film aperture in Maya by default is set to full frame. Now I have all the relevant information for my camera I can now start setting up my scene. First thing I'm going to do is create the camera itself. Just going to create an ordinary camera and just move it back along the grid a second. Go and look into it. And because we're going to be using this to project textures for eventually, I'm going to rename this as projection camera. I'm also going to set up my attributes. Uh, as we already know, the horizontal and vertical film aperture are correct, uh, but our focal length should be 50 millimeters. Next I'm going to set up the resolution. Again, looking at my image properties, um, we can see that the dimensions of this image are 5616 by 3744. If I go into my render settings, I can set this to 5616 by 3744, giving me a device aspect ratio of 1.5, which is correct. Next I'm going to bring in the image plane itself, so I'm going to go to View, Image Plane, Import Image, and I'm just going to use the Battersea 5D Mark II 50mm JPEG image. Okay, now I'm also going to set up the resolution gate just so that we get a slightly further out crop, so I'm going to go to View, camera settings, resolution gate, and that will just zoom out so I can see the entire extent of what's going to be rendered. Um, I might set the overscan a little bit further because it's not quite all the way out. So if I just go hit control A, go into my camera shape node. If I go into the display options here, you can see I can go down to overscan and if I just hold down control and click in where it says overscan I can just drag that out a little bit just to set it so I've got a little bit of a border in there. I'll also be 
using the backspace key quite a lot throughout this tutorial um, just to by clicking the backspace key that gets me into 2d pan and zoom mode and that will allow me to while I hold down the backspace key with the middle mouse button pan my view without affecting the camera and zoom my view with the right mouse button without affecting the camera but it just basically allows me to control what I'm actually seeing and then by tapping it again that will get me back out of pan and zoom mode rather than trying to match the orientation of the grid to the back plate up we're actually going to be ignoring the grid altogether so I'm going to go to display and turn off grid for a moment instead of that we're going to be creating geometry and orienting the geometry to our back plate instead now this is going to cause us to have geometry which is out of sync with our ground plane however at the very end of this tutorial we're going to be able to rotate all of our geometry back into place so that it sits correctly with that ground plane on the main structure of the power station itself you'll find that it's very hard to find any defined corners instead we're going to be using this left hand corner to align our geometry up to and then build on from there I'm going to start by creating a polygon cube which will appear somewhere in my scene and because we can see that the top left hand corner is where we can see well the only corner um, I'm going to move the pivot point to the top left hand corner of my cube so I'm going to hold down D and V that's pivot point and point snap mode and drag that up to the top left hand corner I think I'll also turn on my smooth shading and turn on x-ray as well it also helps if we turn on wireframe on shaded so we get a wireframe when we deselect the geometry I'm also going to add this into a display layer so I can also change the color so I'm going to select the geometry go to display and click on this little icon here which will create a new layer I'm just going to call this geo and I'm going to make it bright yellow so hit save now whenever I deselect you can see it's nice and easy to see okay so I'm going to move this into place as before I'm going to be using the pan zoom mode holding down the backspace key right mouse dragging to zoom middle mouse dragging to pan and I'm going to attempt to move and rotate this box into this corner I may just go back into wireframe for a moment so I can see the corner a little easier I'm just going to move that right to that corner there and then attempt to start to rotate the box to the correct orientation now once I've got what I think is the correct orientation I'm going to scale this out now I'm going to scale along and as you can see this is almost matching and if I scale in the Z axis again not quite as well you can see there's a little bit of a mismatch there but that's fine that's uh, to be expected at this stage um, now we also have this building here which actually if you look slightly closer at it you can see is actually slightly recessed so if I scale across you'll actually notice that it may not match up um, in fact it shouldn't really match up correctly um, because of the recess um, however it can still be used to get a rough idea of the angle of this wall here so I'm going to scale this all the way across I'm actually going to be using quite large areas to block out um, and then once I've blocked this out blocked out the angle with quite large structures I'm then going to build the smaller structures inside so I'm going to maybe just scale that down to sit to the bottom and zoom in again so as I said you can see that there are some issues with this it's not quite right now you may find that the rotation tool itself may be a little bit too coarse in order to do very fine adjustments what I tend to do is switch to if I click on this twice switch this to slider mode and then if I click on this icon 
twice again this will give me fine tune slider mode so now if I need to do my rotations I can take the rotate X here and just kind of nudge this around like so 